face cams or webcams or whatever you call them are so important to live streaming because they help you connect with your audience or at least help you show off a product. But with so many different camera options out there, it can be daunting to know how much to spend or which camera to pick. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the best cameras for live streaming at different budgets. So if you have no budget, don't worry, Xbit has you covered. All you need to do is download Xbit VCam on your PC. Then on your phone, download Xbit Connect Webcam. Make sure the phone and the PC are on the same network. And then launch Xbit Connect Webcam on your phone. Then on VCam, you'll see your phone and then you can use your phone as a webcam on your PC. And you can even do things like remove your background or change your background. So for pretty much 95% of streaming, the classic tried and true Logitech C920 is the only webcam you need. And if you need to make it look better, just add some lighting, it'll last you a really long time. If you really need to go to the next level, then you can get Elgato's face cam. It has a one inch sensor, wide angle of view, and a lot more settings that you can tweak with in the Elgato app. Now, if you really want 60 FPS, but you don't want to pay necessarily as much for the face cam, the Logitech stream cam is also a really good option. Now the next level up is buying a dedicated camera for this, but if you don't yet quite have the budget to also buy a capture card, what you can do is buy cameras that can be used as webcams. So cameras like the Sony ZV-10 or the Canon G7X Mark III, you can buy these cameras and you connect them via USB and then you download an app provided by the manufacturer. And what this app lets you do is it lets you turn them basically into webcams. So it'll install a driver for a virtual camera device, you add this to XSplit, and you configure some settings in the camera and then you can add them as webcams. Now there are some limitations. You won't get the full frame rate or the full resolution. If you want that, you will need to buy a capture card. So if you have a bit of money to throw around, it's time to buy the higher end cameras. Now we could really go to infinite amounts of money here, but I think there's two types of cameras that basically fit this whole gamut of possibilities. So the first is buying a mirrorless camera like a Sony A7S III or a Canon R5, these cameras will let you do up to 4K 60 FPS, so they're pretty much future-proof. They have a clean HDMI output, which means you need a capture card to capture at these resolutions. So if you wanna capture at 4K, you'll need a PCIe card, something like the Elgato 4K 60 Pro, and that's how you capture all these and hook them up. You might also need to buy dummy batteries and stuff if you wanna keep them powered for long times. Now on the other side, if you need cameras that can go long distances, or have really long cable runs or, or a bit easier to manage because of mirrorless cameras, you do have to buy a lens. You probably want something like an SDI camcorder. So there's something like the Canon XA35, which has an SDI output that you can then connect to an SDI capture card and add it as a video source. So the reason why you wanna use SDI is you can do really long cable runs and then you can also buy multiple input SDI capture cards like the Magewell Pro Capture Series. So if you're covering an event, you can have at least four different camera inputs. So those are basically the best camera choices at different levels. But again, I really wanna stress the importance of good lighting. A good lighting will do more for your camera than a better camera will. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments or even recommendations of your own for cameras, be sure to leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.